hey guys and welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm going to read out the first chapter and then if you want let me know i'll make another video in which i'll read out the you know the important bits chapters which are from the point of view of xander adrian uh, so if you want that, those chapters let me know or the epilogue just let me know in the comments and i'm not gonna waste a lot of time i've already made another uh, made another video on the review so just go check that out as well and let's continue not to waste a lot of time chapter one cecily this is a mistake the worst of all the most disastrous of all maybe even the deadliest i shift in place sweating behind my mask my t-shirt and jeans stick to my heated skin until it's almost too unbearable I inhale sharp breaths into my starved lungs, but I might as well just be consuming smoke. My fingers itch to touch the mask or readjust the wig that digs into my skull. After careful consideration, I don't. This placed place must be filled with surveillance cameras, and the last thing I want is to catch these people's attention. Not when I am not supposed to be here, behind enemy lines. My gaze flits sideways discreetly as I methodically alternate between breathing through my nose and mouth. The sledgehammer of dust starts to tilt on the horizon, splashing a hint of orange behind the grey clouds. An eerie sensation coats the thick air and trickles into my bones. No one aside from me seems focused on the sun's ceremonial descent or the bold stilettos of danger this place is coated with. On either side of me, people stand wearing similar white masks and black numbers written on their foreheads. I was one of the first to be allowed inside the chamber of decadence and my number is 23. I stand in the second row that, like the first, has 20 people. No students. There are four rows and the fifth row is steadily being filled by other participants who have been directed inside the gothic-like mansion by burly men in black suits and bunny masks. Slashes of red crack their mask at the mouth and surround the holes where their black eyes show. But the part that made me stiffen aside from their sharp, dirty teeth was how the one at the entrance double-checked the invitation QR code on my phone. I was so sure he would figure out that I stole someone else's invitation and was trespass trespassing where I shouldn't be. Despite the brown wig I wore to cover my attention-grabbing silver hair, the grey contacts and thick-framed glasses, I wasn't conf confident I would go unnoticed. Still, I didn't speak to avoid giving away my British accent. After all, the King Hughes is an all-American school and we all from Royal Elite University are easily picked out from the crowd, especially one we are not supposed to be of. Like this initiation. The money gave me a hard stare, definitely longer than the one he directed at the other participants. But he eventually strapped a number mask on my face and a tag on my wrist with the same number. I had to leave my phone, keys and glasses with his bunny friend before I was allowed inside. And now, I wait, with about 85 others, make that 87. I know because I counted. That's what I do when my nerves are about to slice open my veins and spill my blood on the ground. I count. I also study my surrounding, watching, observing, and searching for a way out. That's the part that made me think I had made a mistake. This place isn't designed with an escape route in mind. Once you're in, you're doomed. Physically, mentally, emotionally. After all, this mansion belongs to the Heathens, one of two notorious clubs at King Hughes that sinners with that simmers with corrupted power, infinite wealth, and mafia ties. In fact, the majority of its members either belong to the Russian mafia or have ties to it. All the students who showed up today are from TKU, except for me, and this thirsting after the smidgen of that power, a glimmer of the monstrosity. 
It's a privilege to receive an invitation to Heathen's Invitation that takes place twice a year at the beginning of every semester. The chance of actually being accepted into the club are about 1%. Not only do these initiations get brutal, but the founding members are also highly selective. Safe to say, I'm not here for any medal or a real chance to get into the club. They'll kick me out the moment they find out who I am anyways. My sole purpose is to get information about their inner working, their security, and to gather as much intel about their member and the property as possibly I can. Now the likelihood of my doing that without drawing attention to myself is probably about 5%, which is admittedly low. But I have a superpower, invisibility. If I choose to, I can slip unnoticed into any situation. All I have to do is remain silent, blend into the background and move seamlessly. The creaking of the gate wrenches me from my, from my busy thoughts and um, announcing the end of the admittance process. A hundred students line up in five neat rows. Some are completely silent like me, others murmur and chat among themselves. Many are even joking, elbowing and nudging their friends. Words like excited, can't wait and finally float in the gloomy air with the energy of the distorted lullaby. Everything about this place reeks of distortion. Some of that sensation has to do with the fact the mansion of heathens use as their compound is vast, old, has capital wives and could be used to perform satanic, satanic rituals. It stands tall with three stories, separate wings and two eastern towers that I suppose are used for surveillance. A haunting quality flows within and around its wall in correspondence with the notorious reputation of the club. Considering the fact that the mansion is situated off campus and therefore has more land than dormitories, it's huge and most importantly secluded. A large forest surrounds the property, but from what I've heard, it's all wired, surveillant, and no other soul aside from heathens or whomever they invite is allowed inside. The double doors that demon-like knobs barge open, and countless men in bunny masks rush in outside in a sea of terror. Not a word is spoken. But the combination of the quickening footsteps, deformed sight, and number of people involved is enough to make me freeze. They circle us in systematic order, their Halloween esky masks serving as the only feature they project onto the, the, onto the world. 35. That's how many there are. And they're all huge, burly, and definitely gods. Because, because, of course, the members of Heathens have their own security. They are mafia princes, after all, with empire of blood to go back to. Their parents wouldn't allow them to go to universities without security shadowing their every move. The casual chatter comes to a halt when the double doors of the top floor swing open and five people, dressed in black, stroll out to the balcony. All eyes focus on them. Every face, every breathe, and every bit of human attention is on the heathens' main members, who look down on us like we are peasants. Neon purge style masks cover their features, each a diff different color red, white, green, yellow, and orange. And since it's near dusk and cloudy as usual in England, the color pops against everything black. A bad pop. A spine-chilling pop, a pop that would make anyone remember these colors and masks should they meet them in the dark. Static fills the air before a distorted voice speaks. Congratulations for making it to the Heathens' highly competitive in initiation. You are the selected elites, the leaders of the club, think are worthy of joining their world of power and connection. The price to pay for such privileges is higher than money, status or name. The reason everyone wears a mask is because you are all same in the eyes of the club's founders. The price of becoming a heathen is handing over your life, in the literal sense of the word. If you aren't willing to pay that, 
please exit the small door to your left. Once you leave, you choose, you lose any chance to join us again. A door beside the big gate open and exactly 10 participants exit with their heads bowed. The remaining 90 don't move from their spots. After all, everyone came here with the promise of power and position that would benefit not only their university life, but also their futures afterward. I would have left as well if I hadn't made a promise, but I did and I need to keep my word. The voice rings out around us again, definitely from overhead. Congratulations again, ladies and gentlemen. We shall now begin our initiation. My attention slides to the five on the balcony, unmovable, silent and intimidating without having to move a muscle. True power isn't shouting or issuing orders. It isn't flexing muscles or showcasing weapons. It's standing with utter confidence like these guys and knowing precisely that they are having everyone here by the throat. True power simmers between, beneath the surface, its energy almost bursting at the seams. Tonight's game is predator and prey. You'll be hunted down by the club's founding members. That will be 5 to 90. So you have an upper hand. If you manage to reach the edge of the property before they hunt you down, you'll be a heathen. If not, you'll be eliminated and escorted out. The founding members have the right to use any method available to hunt you down, including violence. If their weapon of choice touches you, you will be automatically eliminated. Bodily harm can and will happen. You're also allowed to inflict violence on the founding members if you can. The only rule is not taking a life. Not intentionally, at least. No questions are allowed and no mercy shall be granted. We don't want any weaklings in our ranks. Everyone's attention, including mine, zeroes in on each member's weapon. Red mask's finger circle a baseball bat that's resting nonchalantly on his shoulder. Green mask is holding a bow and has arrows with rubber points in a quiver that's slung all over his back. White mask strokes a huge chain that's draped around his hand like a snake. Orange mask gloved hands rest on the top of a metal golf club that's propped on the ground. Yellow mask has no weapons at all, but his fists are bold. When they said violence, they really meant it. I knew that. I've spent last night mentally preparing for it, actually. But reality is different from anything I could have ever imagined or predicted. You have a 10 minutes head start. I suggest you run. The initiation has officially begun. All at once, feast feet shuffle around me. Then everyone is running in different directions. I stare back one final time at Heathens in their black clothes, never a new neon mask and unmoving stance. They watch the scattering of participants without a change in demeanor, no reaction, not even a flicker of excitement. These are people who were taught to always stay calm, to bide their time, wait for opportunities and never show their eagerness. Even when I'm sure the hunt is nothing more than gratification for them. It's definitely not about accepting new members or survival of the fittest. There have been countless initiations in the past, most of them ending without adding any members and no one knows anything about the participants who did manage to pass the initiation. I try to gorge faces from the mass or bills, but they're all similar muscular and tall except for the white mask who's a bit leaner. Still, it's impossible to tell who is who or search for the one that I should absolutely stay away from. Scratch that. I should avoid them all. They're predators and I am part of the prey. If I end up being caught by any one of them, I'll be ripped between their teeth. My feet falter for a second too long, a second I don't have, a second that everyone else uses to run forward. I turn around and follow them. My limbs shake with every move, but the promise I made beats behind my ribcage and the ferocity of a second heart. The students run between the gigantic trees, oblivious to the gloomy air that hugs the compound and wraps around every nook and cranny. With the lack of sun and only so little light, the green trees appear dark, ominous, and stuffed with cult and demonic vibes. 
Choosing to focus on the mission, I sprint to, the, to gain as much distance as possible. I come across trees on which small cameras and speakers have been strategically installed to cover the entire ground. I lower my head and run past it to avoid capturing the attention of whoever is watching these feeds. I doubt the members would use them to hunt us down, but they might. After all, there are no rules in tonight's hunt. I slip behind bushes following a group of students I overheard whispering about some sort of strategy earlier. Usually, I would put as much distance as possible between me and others, but I'm here to observe how these monsters function. The only way to stop deranged people is to study them first, get under their skin and understand their workings. Only then will you be able to inflict any sort of damage. I'm not the one who will cause any damage, by the way. I'm too physically weak for that. But I have perfect spying skills due to my superpower, which is invisibility. The group of three don't notice me following them from my place behind the bushes. My shoes are silent and any noise I make by sliding between the trees is in sync with the sound they release. We cut some distance in the forest while moving at a regular pace. They're working smarter, not stronger. Instead of running and attempting to avoid the heathens, these three seem to somehow know their way around the forest and are using that advantage to reach the finish line faster. Numbers 74 and 18 eliminated. I flinch at the sound of the speaker and I force myself not to think about how they got eliminated. The three I'm following, 5, 6 and 7, don't even pause at the announcement. This must be a redo for them. Many who failed previous initiations may be invited back to the Heathen's mansion if the members deem them worthy of another try. One more reason why these are the perfect candidates to follow. They push through fallen branches and even though they are not paying attention to the cameras, they tactfully slip between them. The voice from the speakers echo around us once and again, announcing the eliminations of more numbers, sometimes in groups, sometimes in pairs. Every time one of them comes, I jerk and alternate between breaking through my nose, breathing through my nose and mouth to remain calm. Five, who is at front, comes to a halt and others follow suit, their fists clenched at their side. Through the branches and leaves, I make out the dragging of the golf club on the ground before Orange Mask comes into view. Six goes to punch him and Orange Mask not only ducks, but he also hits him across the face with the club. I slam my hand to my mouth to keep from shrieking as blood explodes from beneath Six's mask and he falls to the ground with a thud. My legs tremble. My legs tremble and I crouch between the bushes watching the scene with small gaps. Five and seven run in different directions and Orange Mask throws his golf at the back of Five's head, slamming him against the tree and then runs after seven. His movements are sure, oozing with a frightening amount of control and power. There's so much power in every motion, every action, every sliver of decision he makes. He didn't even wait for his club to hit five. He knew it would and it did, as evidenced by the participant's motionless body on the ground. Something tells me he chose to run after seven for a reason, and curiosity knocks at my insights to find out what the reason was. But I don't because that would mean following after them and surely getting myself eliminated. Curiosity is the work of a demon and his minion demon in order to make us irrational. The speaker says number six and five are eliminated and I wait for number seven, but it doesn't come. Maybe he managed to escape. Go for it, random American lad. Point is, I am safe for now. Slowly, I rise to my full height, curiously studying my surroundings. This time, I touch my wig, pushing it in place and ignore the tingles of my sweaty skull as I tap my mask a few times to make sure it's there. The sound of several set of footsteps reaches my sensitive ears and I crouch back down as four participants run across a clearing. Orange mask heads towards them with red mask following. They send them flying in no time and their unconscious body flies to the ground. 
I cover my mouth with my hand again, nails digging into the mask plastic material and scratching at its surface. Blimey. This is a lot more gruesome than I could have ever imagined. Yes, I've heard the rumors about how cutthroat the heathens can be and how they never hold back. But witnessing them actually hitting and punching is a completely different story. It's not only the images of exploding blood of hard punches against faces and bodies or that they've broken a few people along the way. It's not only the Halloween esque visual of heartless neon mask hunting people as if they're animal. It's also the sound of it. The thwack, whips, punches and thuds of bodies falling inert to the ground. It is muffled screams, the wails and the begging of some of the participants. One of them said, I'm out, please spare me this once, before his head was shoved against the tree. The two Heatons barely acknowledge each other with a look before each goes in different direction. Red Mask dis disappears through the trees and I contemplate the best way to do that without al alerting Orange Mask. You know what? Might as well wait until he leaves before I even move. Despite the pain that screams at my limbs or my shaking legs, I remain in the crouching position, unmoving, scared to breathe properly. Orange Mask leans down by five and then grabs his glove. Something liquid smudges his black leather gloves and drips on the ground in bright red. Blood red. How can they be so monstrous at such a young age? But then again, they've probably been this way since they were born, considering the world they belong to. I've never liked these types of people, those who hurt just because they have the power to, those who ruin entire families just because they can. Morally corrupt people. The heathens are at the top of the list with their screwed clothes and conduct of hedonistic mindset. Orange Mask rises to his impressive height that nearly eats up Horizon, then slowly, too slowly, his head tilts in my direction. The neon stitches glow in the near darkness as eerie silence takes its calm. My spine jerks when his rough, deep voice echoes in the air. I know you're hiding. Come out, and I promise not to hurt you much.